We explained the PKPD of vancomycin and determined the vancomycin loading dose. We also recommended IDSA guideline concordant empiric vancomycin maintenance dose and frequency. We also determined empiric vancomycin dose and frequency based on population pharmacokinetics. Now the next learning objective is given a patient with an MRSA infection, select an individualized vancomycin dose and frequency based on serum vancomycin level. Most hospitals in the US get a single vancomycin level, typically a trough level. So first, let's examine how to ad adjust the dose based on a single vancomycin level. Anytime you have a level back and you're about to assess the dose, first and foremost, you need to reassess the patient's renal function to make sure the renal function is stable. Because depending on what's going to happen with the renal function, that could affect how you're going to adjust the dose and frequency. Then you need to assess the level. So when you order a trough, you shouldn't always assume that it's actually a trough. So when you order a trough, it's just a matter of when the nurse actually draws the level. So when the level comes back, even though it's labeled as a trough, you should assess the time that it was drawn to make sure that it was actually a true trough. Once you establish that the level was actually a trough, then you can actually use uh, a simple proportion to, to estimate how to adjust the dose. And this equation of proportions only works with total daily dose. For example, if somebody was receiving one gram Q8, then the total daily dose would be three grams. So you would put 3000 milligram here, and then you would put here the, the actual level that came back as a trough, assuming that the measured trough was not at goal, because it was if it was at goal, then you shouldn't change the dose. But if it was not at the target, trough then you need to adjust the dose so then here you will put the goal trough and then solve for x and x would give you the total daily dose you can use this equation with either subtherapeutic levels or with supratherapeutic levels so if it's a subtherapeutic level uh, ideally you're going to increase the daily dose if it's supratherapeutic, you're going to decrease it. And then whatever uh, daily uh, total daily dose that you get, then you will have to convert it to the same frequency. So for example, if somebody was receiving one gram Q8 and you converted uh, that to 3,000 3, milligram, um, whatever here you get, you need to convert it to Q8. Um, and that's how this uh, proportion equation will work. You have to maintain the same frequency. Otherwise, if you try a different frequency, it's not going to be as accurate. So that was the fast way of doing it based on a single level. Another way to do it is to actually use uh, population kinetics. So you can use the first order kinetic uh, equation, C2 equals C1 times E to the negative K times delta T. So delta T is the time between... Uh, uh, the time of C1 and time of C2. Now, when you do get a single level, you only have C2. So you don't really have C1. So because you only have C2, you cannot really calculate the K. So although you have a level from the patient, uh, this method is not truly individualized because the only way to truly individualize uh, the pharmacokinetics is to have two levels to actually calculate the K. Now in this case where you only have a single trough, now you have to estimate what that peak would be. So you can use this equation. So depending on the dose that the patient received, use the volume of distribution from population kinetics and then the trough is the level that you actually measured in the patient. So use the dose that they got and the volume of distribution from population kinetics and the trough that you get to estimate the peak. And then based on this estimated peak, you can re-estimate the K. So previously you used the K from population kinetics. Now you kind of, um, you know, semi-individualize it because the trough is from the patient, but the peak is still estimated. So overall, this K is not truly individualized. And then you can recalculate the clearance based on the new K and the volume of distribution from population kinetics from before. And then once you get these uh, new values, you can calculate new tau and dose using the old volume of distribution and the new K and the new clear clearance. Anytime you make a change to the dose, you gotta get a trough at the steady state. So anytime you change the dose, you gotta wait to get the level prior to the fourth or the fifth of the new dose. Because every time you change the dose, now the new regimen is not as steady state. So you got to give the new regimen time to get to a steady state. And of course, 
always before you actually adjust the dose and frequency of vancomycin, actually evaluate to see if the patient still needs vancomycin. Oftentimes, vancomycin is used empirically, and after a few days, it should be determined if the vancomycin needs to be continued or not. So oftentimes, if you actually evaluate the need for vancomycin, it might be that vancomycin is no longer needed. So your intervention would be to actually discontinue vancomycin. So before you spend time to figure out the dose and frequency for vancomycin, first evaluate if it's actually needed. Now let's take a look at patient-specific pharmacokinetics. So this is when you actually get two levels in the patient. So when you get two levels, you can actually calculate the K. So you use this equation to calculate the K. Now this uh, C1 and C2 don't necessarily have to be pecan trough. You know, if they are pecan trough, excellent. If they are not, you can actually e extrapolate what the true peak and what the true trough is. And then once you get the true peak and trough, you can use them to actually calculate the volume of distribution. So you use the dose and the time of infusion that the patient received. You use the K that you just calculated along with the time of infusion. And then you put the actual peak and trough that were calculated in the patient or if they were actually measured in the patient. And that gives you a specific volume of distribution. And then you can calculate the new tau and then you can actually get the new dose. And, uh, you know, again, for this peak, you put uh, 30 if your target trough is 10 to 15 and you put 40 if your target uh, trough is 15 to 20. And then once you get the dose and frequency before you actually recommend it, you gotta verify to see if it would give you the trough that would be what you want.